What's up guys and welcome back to another update video of The Bazaar. Today, I wanna to introduce you to Steven, our senior designer. Hey everyone, I'm Steven Dewhurst and I'm a new designer on The Bazaar. So the theme of The Bazaar, right, is that you're in this grand intergalactic marketplace and it is eccentric and it's dangerous, but it's not a war zone. And we do have all these encounters and they do cost you health. So what's even going on here? And so we're spending a lot of time thinking about and sort of drafting different options for what these things are. And we also want to give this idea of, it's not so much that you're fighting monsters, it's that you're getting into all locations. I mean, no one dies in the bazaar, but this is a place that, you know, you go into the wrong alley and you're going to meet some unsavory characters and a lot of things are going to play out there. And we want to get that idea across. And so one of the things that we've been doing is figuring out what is our actual breakdown of like what monsters are. We're definitely going to have some that are, you know, a, a creature, right? There is a thing that comes up out of the sewers or some predatory bird that comes out of the skies. And some of that will have fantasy tropes. Like we, we might have a dragon, we might have a phoenix, things of that nature, but we also want a thief who's just here to take your money. We also want an alien fleet commander who is here to do his shopping and he does not have time to stumble into someone like you. Like we just want to get across this idea of all the people that are in the bazaar and why they might have conflicts that lead you to sort of these, these fun game mechanics. That's a big thing that we're doing right now is just breaking down the monsters and figuring out every time I run into a monster, what does it tell me about the world? What does it tell me about the character I'm playing? Cause maybe they'll respond differently to my character based on lore and background. And also what is a collection of them? Tell me, because running into a goblin will tell you something about the world. Running into a goblin followed by an orc, followed by an ogre, et cetera, will tell you something very different. And we want to make sure that in a given run, you might run into a horrible fanged beast that came out of someone's basement. But the next thing that you run into is, you know, some bravo, right? Like someone with a chip on their shoulder who wants to show off to their friends. And the next person that you run into is some criminal assassin. And he's not here for just anyone. He's here for you. Like we want this sense of running into all these people paints this very multifaceted picture of what this space is and what your character is doing inside of it. That's the first thing we're working on. And then you get down to the mechanics and the mechanics for the creatures are actually a really interesting design space because fundamentally this is a card game, right? And it's all playing itself out. And we need to figure out what are creatures is sort of like the, the big question here because a lot of times we end up using similar items. If we're gonna design a musket for Vanessa, for instance, and we run into a character who would reasonably have a musket, it's going to be the same musket, right? And we're not going to spend a bunch of resources and limit our item pool and, and all that sort of thing. It's also, like, if they've got a musket, you're going to want to have that musket. Like, why can't I Why can't I buy that from one of the shops? And so, you know, my musket and the monster's musket, they will be the same, which is the same musket as the Vanessa that I run into at the end of this day that I fight in a PvP fight. And so there's a real risk of the monsters have different art, but this just feels like playing other little authored, less interesting builds not as much variety as the players, but they're still fundamentally player builds. How do we deal with that? How do we make it fun and exciting? And how do we do that in a way that, that we can do a lot of it and give you a lot of variety? So, you know, one thing that we could do is make a bunch of monster items, but we've got a, a generic item that's just like fangs. Lots of things can have fangs for like interesting magic characters that could have an ability represented. But we don't want to go too deep down that rabbit hole of here's custom items for monsters. And when we do do them, which we aren't doing in some places, the thing we're going to do with them is make it so there are items made for the monsters that you can only get from the monsters, but you can get them. They tend to be rewards for the monsters. So for instance, we've got this idea for a rogue scrapping robot. Think of it as like a, you know, it's a garbage truck, but it's like semi-sentient and it loves grinding up garbage, but it has gone rogue and you encounter it you should probably beat it up and disassemble it so it can get some help. But in doing that, we're like, okay, well, what is this thing gonna be? And we thought like, well, you know what? A thing like that would be good at is destroying armor and metal and stuff like that. So theoretically, it should be very good about shields, right? In the theming of our game, oftentimes when you get shields, it's represented by something metal, some sort of plating, some sort of covering. And so we've made an item that is specifically very good against shields and given it to that monster. So when you fight that monster, that feels different than most of your encounters. And then once you beat that monster, you can take some gold or you can take this item. So taking a specialized item like that allows us to have an interesting space where you can really think about your build and its strengths and its weaknesses. Because in a given run of the bazaar, do you want an item that's extremely good against shields? Well, maybe not because you don't know if other players are gonna be running that, if you're gonna run monsters. But if you have a build that is specifically very bad against shielding things, right? Like if you don't have access to poison, if you've got a bunch of things that trigger on dealing health damage and you really need to churn through shields, this is a great item specifically for you in a vacuum because there's a bunch of decks that 
that will present a problem for you. And this specifically solves that problem. And we're trying to build items like that for monsters that they can drop. And fundamentally still also kind of feels like you're fighting against players because other players will end up with that item. And so one of the things that we're relying very heavily on is making hero powers for monsters that feel very, very different uh, to player hero powers. And since they're paired with a group of items that we're curating, we can make them a little bit bananas, right? So one of the powers that we have is every time the player uses an item of any kind, this creature will just burn you for three, which is wildly good against any sort of build that has like fast firing things or lots of items and presents a pretty unique challenge to players because there are builds that are fast that will get around it. Like there are ways to sort of mitigate flame or a bunch of builds that are good against it that are good specifically against it in ways that it's not good against any other PVP build, right? It makes you think about your build differently where you run into that monster and you're like, well, I'm never gonna see a player that presents this particular challenge. Is my deck good against this? Yeah, I think so. And then you go and you, you fight that and you see how it plays out and you just get to see your deck function in a very different environment, which is pretty fun. So we've also got things like the first time this creature takes damage, it does something large. It poisons you or it sets you on fire or it increases its speed with all of its items very quickly. And that again, creates a very different style of encounter that is if I'm playing a big item build that smacks it once, that's good against that. If I'm dealing a tiny bit of damage and then building up to something like, well, that's very bad because you let it get off its big thing at the start. So just ways to make them feel very different. That again, the hero power that, you know, sets your opponent on fire every time they use an item, we're probably not going to give that to a player because it's just, you win a lot with that because you're not pairing that with, you know, the two swords that we gave that creature. You're pairing that with a full build, et cetera, et cetera. And then maybe, maybe later we'll have a thing where we'll curate some monster powers and create exciting events where you can get that. But that's the main thrust of what we're doing with monsters right now is trying to use hero powers to fundamentally change the space that items work within so that the monsters themselves can still basically use our item set. It's also good from an onboarding standpoint because players will see items in a lot more places and have a lot more chances to understand how they work and potentially to get excited about them and say like, that was a cool item that monster had. How do I get that? Is that a different character? When will I get to see it? So we want to like keep all of that more or less in place, but then use powers, sometimes multiple powers on the same creature to really get across, this isn't a normal fight. This isn't how fights work with players. This is actually a fundamentally different space and fundamentally different way that your deck is going to execute. And you get to sort of like experience that new piece of gameplay as well. That's what we're doing with monsters. That's uh, the direction we're heading in. I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. If you've got thoughts on the sorts of encounters you'd like to feel from monsters, like the sort of gameplay you're looking forward to, please reach out. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, thanks again for joining us on the making of the bizarre.